Hello, my name is Christina Xaxner from the Technical University of Graz and today I want to present our paper Single Shot Deep Volumetric Regression for Mobile Medical Augmented Reality. The first author of this work is Florian Kana and the corresponding author is Jan Egger. What is the motivation for medical augmented reality? Every day a large amount of medical images are captured within the clinical routine to support clinical diagnosis and treatment plans. Consequently, numerous computational tools exist for visualizing and processing this data and to optimize information gain and clinical workflow. These tools are subject to a continuous ongoing technological developments. One of these tools is augmented reality. In the past years, augmented reality has attracted the interest of medical industry and medical research alike as it presents an interesting opportunity to display medical data in a very intuitive way. For example, instead of showing medical images on a 2D monitor separately from the patient, augmented reality allows the visualization of images registered with the patient in the same physical space in the physician's view. One of the most important parts of medical augmented reality is image to patient registration. So how do others perform this image to patient registration? A very straightforward approach is to use fiducial based markers. These are rigidly attached to the patient and can be tracked in an inside out fashion with the augmented reality device itself or alternatively in an outside in fashion by using some external tracking system. However, these approaches require careful preparation and calibration of the entire system. And if the marker is accidentally moved, the procedure needs to be repeated. Furthermore, the placement of the markers to the um, patient is often invasive and therefore causes discomfort or even additional suffering for the patient. A more natural solution is to use surface-based methods. For them, volumetric imaging data is directly registered to the skin surface of the patient. For obtaining the surface information, a depth sensor or stereo camera is usually required. As an alternative to these surface scanners or to marker-based approaches, we propose to use a volumetric regression network, short VRN, as introduced or developed by Jackson et al. for surface reconstruction. The VRN allows the reconstruction of a 3D model of the patient's face from a single 2D photograph. Then we can automatically register volumetric imaging data, in example captured from CT or MRI scans, to this 3D reconstruction. This workflow enables a video see-through augmented reality application running only on mobile devices, such as smartphones or tablet computers. Thus, our proposed system does not require uncomfortable markers, external tracking infrastructure or expensive depth sensors. Instead, it runs only on the mobile device. We implemented our augmented reality application by integrating it within the Studierfenster framework, which was developed by our group. Studierfenster is a free web-based client-server framework for medical image processing. The basic architecture is shown in this figure. On the client side, we either have a web interface developed with HTML, CSS and JavaScript or alternatively a mobile Android application, which I will explain a bit in a bit more detail later on. Thus, the client can be operated either from a web browser or a smartphone or tablet. The client is responsible for sending photographs to the server, receiving the results and rendering the final augmented reality overlay. The server runs on a desktop computer and was implemented using Python Flask. It is responsible for heavier computations such as face reconstruction using the volumetric regression network and point cloud registration. Also, the imaging data and 3D models are stored on the server in our file system. Before augmented reality system can be used, medical imaging data of patients 
needs to be collected and pre-processed. We collect volumetric imaging data showing the head and neck area from the clinical routine. Our application works with both CT and MRI scans. The purpose of this data is twofold. First, it, con it contains the structures we want to display in the augmented reality environment. These structures can be anatomical, for example the skull, or pathological, for example a tumor. We segment these structures from the imaging data using manual or semi-manual techniques. We create a mesh from the segmentation using the margin cubes algorithm. Second, the data is also needed as a model for our automatic image to patient registration. The volumetric images contain a sub-millimeter precise model of the patient's skin surface. We segment this model using thresholding and again extract the mesh using margin cubes. Then we create a point cloud representation, which will be later used for image to patient registration. After extracting the 3D models, we transform them to a common coordinate frame, which is located at the tip of the nose. And finally, we deploy all content to our server, from which the data can be loaded as needed. The Android application of our augmented reality system was developed using Unity 3D and AR Core. In principle, it enables two modes between the user can switch. The front camera pipeline and the back camera pipeline. Note that the white uh, components are run on the mobile device or the smartphone and the gray components are run on the server side. Uh, the front camera pipeline works as kind of a magic mirror system in which the user can see himself. The front camera pipeline uses IR Core's augmented faces module. So it detects a person's face, estimates some landmarks from it, uh, specifically the nose tip, the left forehead and the right forehead. And then the app requests the meshes of the corresponding patient from the server and anchors them at the landmarks detected by our core using a point-based registration. Finally, the overlay of the patient with virtual images is rendered on the smartphone. Now the back camera module uses our proposed single shot method. First, the application maps the environment using a simultaneous localization and mapping strategy. Then the user captures a 2D photograph of the patient, which is sent to the server. Simultaneously, a raycast is performed on the map created by the SLAM algorithm. Um, and the raycast is performed through the nose tip of the patient and it will later act as an anchor for the virtual content. On the server side, the image is first downsampled and normalized to fit with the required input by the VRM. Then the face is reconstructed and registered with pre-interventional imaging using a two-step registration pattern, which I will explain later on. Then the re registration result is sent back to the device for visualization and rendering. So now I want to go into a bit more detail on the server backend. To keep the computational load on the mobile device as low as possible, we use the server PC to perform heavy computations. The first step performed on the server is the phase reconstruction using the volumetric regression network. As an input, the volumetric regression network receives the 2D photograph, which was captured with the mobile device, so the smartphone or the tablet. The image is scaled and normalized to fit with the expected input of the BRN, and then it is fed to the network for reconstruction. A network creates a 3D mesh of the face from the image. From this mesh, we generate a point cloud to be used for registration. Surface registration is the next step performed on the server side. In this step, we match the reconstructed point cloud from the first step with the point cloud extracted from pre-interventional imaging in an offline step. For registration, we perform a two-step procedure. First, we perform a coarse global alignment by computing fast point feature histograms in the two point clouds and matching them using a random sample consensus algorithm. And finally, we refine this coarse global alignment using iterative closest point. 
The result of the registration is a 4 times 4 transformation matrix. This matrix is sent back to the client together with the meshes loaded from the file system on the server of anatomical and pathological structures to be visualized in the augmented reality environment. This video shows an example of the phase reconstruction and registration using the web in interface integrated with our Studierfenster framework. First, the user selects a CT or MI scan in the NRV file format and the skin surface is automatically segmented from the volumetric image and a mesh representation is created. As soon as this is done, the mesh becomes visible and the user can inspect it in the browser window. The next step is to upload a photograph of the patient's face, which is selected and uploaded. It is promptly, promptly reconstructed by the volumetric regression network, resulting in a 3D model of the face as seen in the photograph. Again, the user is able to inspect the model from different perspectives in the window. After both 3D models have been created, they are again they are converted to a point cloud representation and registered using the previously described registration pipeline. Once the registration is finished, the results can be examined. <clears throat> Lastly, the web interface also allows for downloading the created 3D models and registration results, which can be later opened with other mesh processing software. Okay, for a quantitative evaluation of our augmented reality system, we measured the closest point registration error as well as the total processing time. The closest point registration error measures the average distance between all points in a reference point cloud, PR, to their nearest neighbor in a model point cloud, PM, which is, which is registered to the reference point cloud using transformation T. For the processing time, we measure the total time it takes to first send a 2D photograph to the server, second performing the 2D to 3D reconstruction using the volumetric regression network, third the point cloud registration between 3D reconstruction and pre-interventional imaging, and fourth the transmission of the registration result back to the client. This table here shows the results we achieved and as you can see the closest point registration error Averaged over 10 test cases was 6.2 millimeters. These 10 test cases include seven patients for which a 2D photograph as well as a corresponding CT scan was available, as well as, as three live test subjects who are healthy but had an MRI scan done beforehand. As you can see, the error was approximately the same in each dimension, which a slightly larger error in the Y dimension. Concerning the processing time, the total time averaged over the 10 test cases was 10.2 seconds. Aside from quantitative measurements, we also want to present some qualitative results of our application. The left figure shows the reconstruction and registration results from different patients, of which we had 2D photographs and CT scans. The first row shows the skin surface extracted from pre-interventional CT scans. The second row shows the 3D face models as reconstructed by the VRN. And the last row shows the result of the automatic registration between the two surfaces. In the right figure, we see some examples taken from the mobile application with three healthy test subjects who had an MRI scan done. On the left, we see how IACOR's SLAM system generates a point cloud of the environment. In the middle, we see two screenshots taken from the Android application, displaying the test subject skulls registered with their heads. The right image shows another example taken from the user's perspective. So here you can see the smartphone screen with the skull and the virtual tumor overlaid on the patient. Our augmented reality system has, compared to other experimental augmented reality solutions for medical applications or high-end navigation systems, 
a very low requirement on hardware and preparation time. It only requires a low-cost mobile device, such as a smartphone or tablet. It works out of the box without complicated calibrations or marker placement. Our results suggest that the VRN can reconstruct the patient's face sufficiently well for registration with pre-interventional imaging. However, the accuracy requirement for medical applications, such as image-guided procedures, are exceptionally high and currently our application is not able to meet these requirements. Nonetheless, our medical partners confirm that the application is usable for pre-operational visualization where only a rough size estimate or rough target localization is of interest. For such applications, the registration error is acceptable. Our medical partners attested our application the potential of easy, quick and efficient support for diagnosis, treatment planning and also educational purposes. To conclude, we developed a video see-through augmented reality system for medical applications involving the head and face. Our contribution is an automatic, marker-free image-to-patient registration pipeline, which requires only a single photograph of the patient. Thus, our application needs no expensive or complicated hardware and runs only on a mobile device, such as a tablet or a smartphone. It allows the visualization of anatomical and pathological structures extracted from medical images, such as CT or MRI, fused with the patient in the same physical space. Our results suggest that our application can be used for pre-operative localization and visualization or, for example, head, of, for example, head and neck tumors. Another area of application could be educational purposes. Finally, we want to thank you for your attention and we want to thank our supporters for their continuous support. Thanks.